Hi and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to go over how you can emulate an IDE or the functionality of an IDE when you're working in the Linux command line. Working with Linux at the command line level has a bunch of advantages, the biggest of which is there is not a lot of data going back and forth over the wire. So that means you can use a virtual machine very easily even if it's you know sitting somewhere remote. Uh, you can log into a, you know, a remote computer with a high latency. You can even do things like what I do uh, as part of my work is I have to log into a remote work site which is only connected via cellular or satellite service. And I can actually log into the machine and I can debug code. I can edit code if I need to on that machine at this remote work site which is you know, really in the middle of nowhere. Built into Linux, there's already great support for the command line. However, if you lose your connection, your SSH session will die, and then you've got to log back in, and you'll find that everything you're working on, you, you know, you, you won't have lost it, but you will have lost the position that you're in and all the, you know, setup that you had done in, in that editing session. Now, there's a great tool that is called Tmux, and this is the, the best tool ever if you're working at the Linux command prompt. So I'm going to give you a quick demo of how it works. I have my command prompt here, and I can quickly invoke Tmux. And you'll see that at the bottom of the screen, there's now a bar that says bash. So that's my session name. Now, Tmux, you know, I can just use it as usual. I can, you know, go PS and away I go. I see my processes, whatever. But uh, the real power of Tmux is the ability to open new windows and panes. So I use uh, Control B and then C, and that will open up a new window. And you can see at the bottom of the panel here, there's Windows 0 and there's Window 1 now. Uh, and I can switch between the two of them by going Control B and then the number of the window I want to open. So this is B0, uh, Control B1, and I'm on screen number one. So let's put top in screen number one here and take a look at my processes. So B0, uh, B1, back and forth. Very easy. I can open up as many windows as I want. So I can go BC and I can open up another window. And let's open up a VI in here. So we'll go VI session class PHP. So now here's my sample VI session. And maybe in uh, window uh, uh, 3, I'm going to open up the other file that I have there. So VI controller class.php. So I'm now able to, by using control B2 and control B3, switch between window 2 and 3. So this provides you the functionality that you have on a regular IDE, the ability to open multiple files and keep them open. The windows are named or whatever the command was that was executing in Linux. Normally you want to rename those. So if you are selected in the window, uh, I'm in window 3 right now, and I go control B comma, I can now rename the window. So I'm going to call this controller. And you'll see at the bottom of the screen it's now labeled controller. I'm going to go to window 2, B2, and then I'll rename it, so B comma, and I'm going to call this one session. Now I can see at the bottom of my screen I got session open in one window, controller open another window. I can go back and forth between them. I can go back to my top window, window 1. Uh, you know, this is all very handy stuff. Having windows available, of course, is a handy feature, but you can actually go one step further and also open up panes within those windows. So if I go control B quote, it splits the window into a uh, separate pane. I can go run another command here so I can, you know, do my ls. I can go uh, php l controller class.php, check the syntax, make sure it's okay. One thing that's handy to do is to open up a uh, shell prompt into your uh, sub pane so you can do commands directly from there. It's also very easy to resize, so you can go control B and then the arrow keys and you can increase or decrease the size. So let's decrease the size there. I can swap between a horizontal split and a vertical split by going control B space. And then I can resize that split by using control B and then the arrow keys again. So I can adjust that as I, I desire. To switch between panes, I use control B and then lowercase o. So control B O, and that switches between the two panes. If you go control B and shift O, that swaps the two panes. Very easy to swap between the two panes there. There you go. So if you're working with one pane and you want to temporarily expand it, you can uh, zoom in by going control B Z, and uh, that brings it into zoom mode. So you can see here that there's a Z at the end of the window name. 
if I go control B2 to switch the session, and then I can go back there, it's still zoomed in on window three. And then I can go control BZ again, and it returns me to my pane layout. It allows a lot of flexibility for what you're working on at a particular point in time. If I want to close any pane or window, I just need to exit the session. So exit, and it is closed. And I can quit here, and I can exit, and this will close window number three. Tmux has a scroll back buffer, which is also quite handy. I'll open up another window and show you how that works. So if I go and cat one of these files, let's cat the session file. This is scrolled off the top of my screen. I go control B and then opening a square bracket. And then I can actually use my arrow keys to go backwards through the file. I can use page up as well, page down and I can uh, look through that scroll back history. Typically what this is useful for is if you have your log files from your web server or from PHP scrolling off in the background, you can go backwards through them and, and view that log data and there's a full record there. Now the last thing that you can do, and this is one of the greatest features of uh, Tmux in general, is you can exit your session. So I can go control BD and I've exited my session. Um, I can go Actually, I'll log off of this server, so I'm logged off. I'll log back in, and then I go Tmux. I can list sessions, see what sessions are open, if any. Oh, there's session zero is open there, and it has five windows. So I can go Tmux attach dash T zero to attach to session zero, and I'm back in, and everything's where where it was. All those shells are still open. This is fantastic because you know what I typically do is I'll run VMs. I'll be working on you know several projects at a time. I'll have a VM running with you know one project. I'll be halfway through it. I'll have you know ten windows open. I'll be working on some code. Uh, I'll have to put it aside for a day or whatever. I can just control BD out of it. Done. It just sits there running you know happily away. And when I'm ready to come back to it, I can attach that session again. And, and go for it. A great thing about Tmux is that you can actually have you know more than one person connected to the session at, at once. So if you're doing you know pair programming, uh, you can actually have two people you know with two separate screens, two separate locations, and you can go through and you can see you're typing in real time. There's one note on this is when you're reattaching, there's also an option called D, which is detach. Uh, this detaches all other sessions that might be connected to Tmux. If the other session has a smaller screen than the one you're working on, Tmux is going to show, you know, around the corners, it'll show a bunch of dots just saying it can't expand past that. You need to detach those other sessions so that your main screen can use the full screen size. So I hope this quick demo of Tmux and VI was helpful to you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and, you know, thumbs up if you like the video. That helps a lot. Thanks for tuning in my channel and I hope you'll join me again.